football, and though it's complex in many areas, you and I know generally that quarterback's great. We can watch Joe Burrow or, you know, we can watch Mahomes and go, oh, Josh Allen. And you can watch guys that aren't very good. We don't need to call them out. And yet, usually, like people inside the league and outside the league, you can kind of tell who can play, who's a backup, who's good. And then there's Justin Fields. So there's a huge gap between what a lot of fans think on Justin Fields, who can be spectacular in moments. I call him a YouTube quarterback. You can put together a clip. He and Sam Darnold, to me, are always similar. You can put together a clip for four minutes and go, wow, but they don't stand in the pocket and accurately deliver the ball uh, on a consistent basis enough to be viewed as a franchise-winning quarterback. So yesterday, Darnold signed a one-year deal. Gardner Minshew got hired. Jacoby Brissett got a deal. And Justin, Her uh, Justin Fields, crickets. How the league views him and how fans view him more than any quarterback in this league. Fans see a star. Coaches and GMs see a guy that doesn't see the field particularly well and doesn't distribute the ball accurately enough and is hurt a lot and turns it over and gets worse as the game goes on. All of it true. If you look, you got to win in the pocket in this league. All the spectacular stuff, got to win in the pocket. Justin Fields' career from the pocket, 27 touchdowns and 25 picks, and a low 80 passer rating. Now, Kyler Murray runs around much smaller, 72 touchdowns. 40 picks and a 95 passer rating. Lamar Jackson, who we see improvement, it feels like, about every 15, 18 games, he runs around a lot. 100 touchdowns from the pocket, 38 picks and a passer rating of 100. And again, with Kyler Murray and Lamar Jackson, I do feel like I've watched improvement. Doesn't mean you're winning playoff games, but they're getting better. Justin Fields, I feel like this is what he is. Maybe if he had an offensive coach, he would tick up a bit, but this is kind of what he is. So the Raiders could have had him, taken Minshew. Uh, Bucks could have had him, took Baker. Atlanta could have had him, took Cousins. Steelers could have had him, took Russ. Now, Seattle is still a possibility, but it does appear at this time, Seattle, which has a pretty well-stocked roster, may just stay with Geno for one more year. He's got no guaranteed money after that. And then draft a quarterback in the first round this year. He'll be the understudy for one year with a new coach for Geno. Then it'll be that young man's job. New England brings in Jacoby Brissett. Starter back. Uh, uh, yeah, New England brings in Jacoby Brissett. So my, my takeaway on that is, well, is he a starter? Is he a backup? They're going to probably do the same thing as a, like a, 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 a Seattle, which is draft a quarterback and put him behind a Jacoby Brissett. So now I do think Fields deserves another shot. I think Seattle's very interesting. Um, I think New England's interesting. But there is a gap here between what the league sees, what the league sees, and what fans see. I do not see a star. What I see is a kid like Sam Darnold who deserves a second shot because he's so athletic. And what's interesting is if you look at Sam Darnold's career in the pocket and Justin Fields' career as pocket passers, they're virtually identical. They're both a little reckless. They both get banged up a lot. They both got talent. You can put an interesting YouTube package together. But I, in the league, Darnold's only getting a one-year deal here. I mean, it's pretty clear Minnesota said, we'll let you start for a year. We're drafting a quarterback. Oh, by the way, if he's good, you're out by Thanksgiving. So, I mean, I'm, I'm interested on Justin Fields. J-Mac does not like this topic. But I think the league is telling you one thing. And the fans see it differently. And I think fans, all of us, mostly kind of see the same stuff. He is sort of the outlier in the league at quarterback. So you got to give up a draft pick to get him, right? You got, And then he's like, what, 14, 15 mil for this year? Russell Wilson, who we did not expect to hit the market three months ago for $1 million. Like, that's a... That's okay, uh, Derek Henry... This field's on brand is going to the Ravens. Two years, about 16 to 20 million bucks. Nine million guaranteed. You don't care much about that. What you do care about, they lost uh, Gus Edwards, uh, the running back to the Chargers. So, And then Austin Eckler went to the Commanders. So it's a little musical chairs with running backs. Uh, you got Chargers got a little more of a power back. Uh, Commanders got a clever back in Austin Eckler, who I think is undervalued, banged up a bit, but very quick, very clever, can catch out of the backfield as well. Nice player. And Derrick Henry goes to the Ravens. So Lamar Jackson, uh, Derrick Henry, 
Uh, they've got their receivers now, so it kind of feels like a power move on brand. Derrick Henry is physically very unique. He never wears down. He's gotten a bit more expensive, and Tennessee wanted to move on. But he'll be a great player for Baltimore for a couple of years. And um, there you go. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.